Thanks very much for, for, for uh, listening to me. Well, you've not got much choice, but here we go. Um, the All Aboard project, um, as many of you might re uh, recall, uh, is trying to do a number of different things. Uh, summarized really in this, this slide, the, the main areas are developing a national digital skills framework for Irish higher education, producing and developing training resources that match each of these kind of topics, uh, piloting open badges, and also running a number of events, campaigns, workshops, and partnership projects. So those are the kind of the main uh, aims of the project. It's a collaboration between the different institutions that are arrayed at the bottom, and I've put in the names of the various people who are either members of the project team or who have contributed a great deal of the, the time and emotional energy towards supporting us in the project team. So thank you very much. And that, that's the map that we came up with and we presented that last time round. Um, and really, that's how we've tried to visually represent the digital skills framework. And what's been really interesting uh, for us in the project team is just uh, how much interest that that has actually provoked. Lots of people seem to be really interested. We've been swamped with requests for more information, uh, to, to present at conferences uh, and to collaborate, which is fantastic. We're, we're, we're humbled by that and, and really pleased. But it also puts a big uh, onus on us to try and, and, and work as collaboratively as possible, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of the kind of impact so far on the project, we've got a number of kind of graphics there just showing some of the kind of uh, groups that we've worked with or worked with individuals in various institutions or presented at various conferences. Uh, since we last met, uh, we've actually published our digital skills framework, which is a review of 64 different <laughs> digital skills and literacies frameworks and, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, and that's been well circulated. We've attended conferences. I was actually invited to present at the IMHE, which is uh, Institutional Management and Higher Education Conference in, of the OECD in Singapore, so I was kind of pleased. Um, and as a result of that conference, I've now been invited to pr present a keynote to the ministers and ministerial meeting uh, of the OECD in Mexico in June. So if anybody's got any kind of tourist advice, please let me know. I've never been before. <laughs> but anyway, so it's great to see how it's sort of clicked with people. And uh, we've certainly had lots of international interest. So we're, we're, as I said, kind of a bit taken aback by it, but, but obviously very, very pleased. Um, what we've been doing also is trying to, you know, uh, build on, on the framework and try and help people understand how it might be used for different purposes. Uh, obviously, if you look at it, we've got this metro map. We've got all the stations corresponding to different topics uh, to do with technology and digital skills. But if people want to work out how to navigate their way around uh, this kind of complex uh, landscape, then we, we're trying to help. Uh, we've come up with the idea, and you've got to forgive me, please, for ex extending this metaphor a little bit further, the, the metro metaphor. We've come up with this idea of essentially travel cards. So they're, in a sense, uh, represent, I suppose, if we look at the, the terminology of the, of the previous presentation, this is kind of a course. So a, a travel card, to, to earn this travel card, you would have to have done uh, six little, or five or six little online lessons, and we've created different travel cards for different kinds of people. And it's not just defined in terms of the job role, the student, or the staff. They're defined in terms of also what people are trying to do, so the creative is one of them. So the travel card idea is a way of, of showing people you can, you know, do, construct your own little courses and get credit for them as you make your way through using badges. I don't know if I've articulated that very well, but we can come back to it if needs be. Um, again, the feedback from that kind of uh, approach has been very positive as well. In terms of the badges, which is another area of our interest, and it's intimately related to the travel cards, because the travel cards, in a sense, are a kind of a badge uh, made up of smaller badges, uh, we, we've had, again, lots of interest. So our badge pilots have extended uh, far beyond just the initial institutions uh, that were part of the consortium. But even within the institutions, uh, the take-up has been quite, uh, quite interesting to see. Uh, so some examples I've got up here. Uh, sorry about the color scheme. <laughs> but just, these are just examples from, from one institution. And you'll see examples from others later on. These are actual real badges that are actually being used. So, 
For example, uh, up at the top there, you can see some that are associated with study skills for students. Uh, it's not that we've, in this particular case, created the content. Uh, we know that a number of institutions, for example, here subscribe to the Skills for Study program that Palgrave Macmillan publishers provide. Now, they have lots of online uh, interactive materials, but they have no way, actually, of recognising that the student has completed them. So what we've done is produce badges for each of those little lessons. So the students are working through them anyway, now they're actually given a badge which can actually be used for, for purposes later on. So academic staff, for example, will know or can say to a student, have you got the academic writing badge uh, you know, from the, the study skills. The, the ones in the middle row there, well, it's not middle row, but the next row down, uh, they're to do with continuing professional development of academic staff and other staff. Uh, so they're associated with things that teaching and learning centres often deal with, uh, things like um, peer review of your teaching, or compiling a teaching portfolio, or supervising research students. So these badges are associated with CPD activities. And just for interest, we've also been doing health and safety ones as well, uh, because obviously it's, there's lots of health and safety regulations and staff who work in institutions uh, have to do some basic training. So we've worked with the health and safety office in Galway and if people do the various training courses, they get a badge. The attraction for the health and safety office is that those badges can also be time limited so that they expire. So if you have to get your fire training repeated every two years, then you know, we should know who's, who's, who's due for retraining and the badge disappears. Uh, some more examples here. Uh, the next one down is about a course which we run on teaching online. Uh, it's associated with a, a, a project <coughs> we were involved with, with by Epigeum, that company. So again, we're using their materials, but we're awarding badges for each of the components. And then down at the bottom, the whole string of badges that we have uh, associated with uh, volunteering, outreach work, uh, kind of public education. So lots of students earn these badges, but also organisations. So here we have a, a, a particularly interesting project called Real Life Science, which is a national competition in Ireland for schools to produce uh, science videos. So not only do the, 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 the participants get the badge, but so too does the school. And so we're now seeing this real life science badge appearing on school websites. So that's a kind of a, a bit of a spin off from what we're doing, but it's all associated with badging and the concept of badging. And as I say, it's been really interesting for us to see the extent to which it's, people have embraced the idea. Um, so, what we're using technologically speaking is uh, the Open Badge Factory. When we last spoke here, we were talking about exploring lots of different systems and trying to determine which were the most appropriate. And it's a fast-moving field. Some of the, the, the platforms we were looking at no longer exist because a year is a long time, <laughs> as you know, uh, in technology. But the Open Badge Factory is, is a, a useful product and for many, many reasons, one of which is it's completely compliant standard. And some of the... Uh, standards compliant, sorry. And some of the... Um, the, uh, the, the, sorry, the, they have plugins for the, all the various institutional VLEs and other websites, so it's actually a very, and it's very easy to use. So typically the badge will be stored in that system, and of course the badge isn't just a nice little graphic, it's all the information, so it's the badging criteria, it's maybe even also the evidence that people have to present to show uh, that they've achieved that badge. So if you were to click on a particular badge, uh, what would come up would be the criteria that you have to meet in order to have that badge. That makes sense. Uh, so there's just an example: peer review of teaching, identify a colleague to work as a partner, plan and organise teaching. So it's, it's very well specified. The badges are associated with very definite, specific achievements, uh, and that's one of their attractions from a kind of uh, career development point of view. Here's another example. It doesn't have to be a course or a, 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 a and it, it can be also tied to an event. So in this particular case, which we'll talk about later on. We have a, a scheme called Digital Champions, so students, if they engage fully in this a workshop, they're awarded this particular badge. But you have to make sense of this. We, we, it's very, very important to develop policy and guidelines for the design and the distribution of badges to make sure, I guess, that we're, we're not the, you know, we're controlling everything, but just to make sure that we don't create a plethora of badges for almost everything. We need to think carefully about the distinction between a badge that has real value to an external audience 
and other badges which might be useful internally within a course to promote motivation uh, and progression. So we've been very careful about that and we've drafted some policies and some guidelines. Also, people need to be able to display those badges. And whilst using the open badge standard means you can pop them onto LinkedIn and Facebook and all those sorts of things, Oh, we're more interested, I suppose, from an academic point of view, that people can actually have their own personal profiles. So we're using, in this project, the Open Badge Passport, which is an open uh, product. Uh, and essentially, here's an example, a real example, of a real lecturer and, uh, who has really earned some badges. So she has an online profile which links to her CV, or she can have her CV built into it, her um, research uh, publications linking to the, the, the university's database for that, and any badges she earns appear uh, on that, that, that passport. So this has been a really useful way to help people also make sense of and see where the badges fit in. For students as well, students have access to this passport system and they will begin to accumulate badges. We, you know, there's a really nice example uh, <clears throat> that you might be familiar with that's used in Deakin University uh, in Australia, uh, and we've had discussions with, uh, with colleagues in Deakin. Uh, they have a really nice example there for, for students. So each student has a profile page. Uh, and essentially any badges which the student earns during their period in the university are accumulated here. If they reach a certain level uh, and they can demonstrate a high level, they, they earn the graduate attributes or what they call hallmarks in Deakin, and they appear here on their personal profile. So these kinds of tools are becoming more and more uh, used and are recognized by institutions, but also by employers and professional bodies. So there's definitely a, a, you know, a, a considerable amount of interest in using these kind of profiles, and badges fit very, very nicely with that. OK, sorry. <laughs> so that's the badges. But what we've been really busy with uh, in the last short while, actually, is in the area of student partnership. If you remember last time round, uh, and one of the bits of feedback we got as well from, from the, the group, was that we were wanting to try and increase the amount of student engagement and participation with the project. Now, to some extent, we had originally considered the issue of having student representation on the group and so forth, but actually, uh, what we've done in the last uh, couple of months is, at our yeah, I suppose a few months, more than a couple, is actually engaged in a number of really, I suppose, deep partnerships with students in the sense of creating projects in each of the institutions. Um, so, for example, in UCD, UCD launched this academic year its Student Digital Ambassador Scheme. Uh, and basically, the students are working on uh, a number of workshops, they're doing training. Uh, there's a, a little handout I provided panel, I'm afraid, but everybody else can get it online, I'm sure. Um, just giving you an idea of the sorts of things they do. Now, we had been in discussion with similar projects elsewhere, uh, and we had discussions with, with colleagues in the LSE and also in the University of Edinburgh uh, who had tried different types of student partnership projects, and we based these models on those and applied them to the, our own institutional context. So the UCD Student Ambassador is a scheme whereby students are, can apply, they're interviewed and selected, trained up, and they then provide a support role across the institution. Uh, it will run for this semester and next semester, so it straddles the, the, the summer period. Uh, and I think it's going very well, isn't it, judging by the amount of work they're doing? And as they're involved in a, a project today as well, actually. That's where many of them are. <clears throat> Uh, again, there's the sort of badges that they can earn from the skills that they acquire. In Galway, we've also got a student scheme, but we've taken a slightly different model. We're trying different variants of the models, and we're going to compare them at the end. Our model is more focused on a sort of campaign style. Uh, so we, we, we call ours digital champions, just for a bit of variety. Uh, and our scheme, students, it's a partnership project. There's this thing called the Explore Scheme in Galway. And basically, that's funding and support for projects that are run jointly by staff and students. So what that means is this Digital Champions project in Galway is run by students as well as by staff. And in fact, I'm really impressed 
like how enthusiastic the students are in running this project. It's really impressive. And I, yeah, I, I want to commend in particular uh, Taig, who the first year, a first year student who's really taken this on board and put a huge amount of effort into it. I mean, I wish I had that kind of confidence and skill and enthusiasm when I was in first year. Uh, it's really impressive to see. So the students there uh, were exploring areas of digital identity, of security, and of online safety, uh, and they're awarded badges. Uh, oh, I've, oh dear, <laughs> 30 seconds, and it's going well. Meanwhile, in Limerick, we have a similar scheme running both in uh, UL and in Mary I, uh, associated with another forum-funded project, Take One Step. So we've tried to link the, the projects together. Speeding along. <laughs> I won't go into this in too much detail, but I will obviously answer questions on it. Uh, we've spent a lot of time working behind the scenes on the technologies, the content, and the various processes. So we have uh, started to develop online learning materials, and also putting quite a big focus on repurposing existing materials. So we're really enthusiastically seeking contributions from, from others. We've actually been given contributions from other institutions, and we're going through them and trying to see uh, where we can really kind of share uh, and really exploit the Creative Commons licenses that people slap onto their materials, but are really in practice remixed. Uh, but enough of that for the moment. And uh, the technologies, well, that's for people who want to know the details about the technologies. I can come back to the question. In terms of the content authoring, though, we're, as I say, trying to do this collaboratively. We have an open curriculum model that we're about to kind of launch, which allows people to prioritize topics, suggest lessons, suggest the activities, and that those will be packaged by our uh, developers. Uh, and also, um, <coughs> we'll be sharing all the materials and giving them credit. We have a style guide, uh, and we have a kind of tools for, for repurposing. But I'll stop there, because Terry's giving me the eye. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. Sorry if that was a bit rushed. Okay, thank you very Thanks. much. Yeah.